We'd like to welcome you to Cask's recipe for effective clinical audit. My name's Stephen Ashmore. And my name's Tracy Ruthven. And what we're here to do is provide you with a short film as part of the Clinical Audit Awareness Week. And what we're doing is we're going to link together what you can learn from bakers and cooks in relation to carrying out your clinical audit. So in terms of some background to this, You'll probably be aware that HQIP are running their first ever Clinical Audit Awareness Week in um, October. And HQIP, as part of that, have been encouraging audit teams to invite staff to a local clinical audit tea break. And audit staff are hoping to uh, bake and cook, and there's various ideas going around on the current NCAF discussion board about different ways you can get people involved. So HQIP seem quite keen and excited about their audit tea break idea and you can find more information out via their website. Here at CASC, myself and Tracy aren't impartial at all to uh, a bit of cake and we always try to come up with some new ideas when we're trying to train people and get them excited about clinical audit and involved. So to link in with the HQIP clinical audit tea break, uh, we've come up with a short film, as I say, that will link in um, ideas around baking and cooking and uh, how that can relate to your clinical audit project. Everyone seems to have gone completely British Bake Off mad um, in the country at the moment so uh, we've, we've got a few ideas um, from famous bakers in terms of how they might be able to help. So as you can see from the aim we are going to look in a slightly different way, in an unusual way, at, at what clinical audit professionals and those undertaking audits can learn from top chefs and bakers. Let's first of all though have a little think about what a recipe really means. The word recipe is something that originates from the 14th century. It's very much a set of instructions, it's about being able to make something. It even links up to the medical profession. It talks about it being a medical prescription. But it says there it's a method to attain a desired end, a recipe for success. And if you look on the next slide, this is our recipe for success, isn't it? It's the clinical audit process. It's something that we're all involved in on a day-to-day -day basis. So what we're saying is if you can follow the clinical audit recipe that you can see there, you should produce a highly successful clinical audit project. So let's move on to the main fun part of the presentation and explore the 10 top tips that clinical auditors can gain from chefs and bakers. Over to Tracy to kick us off. And here we are. Here she is, the queen of cooking, Mrs Delia Smith. She's well known for basic cookery tips and keeping things simple. So our tips are very much for clinical audit about getting the basics right. Make sure that you're undertaking a clinical audit project. You know the differences between clinical audit and different disciplines. There are lots of tools and information to help you and we've made some suggestions here on the screen. Please have a look at our clinical audit tools website as this may help you. Moving on to our next famous cook, you have in front of you the Chinese legend that is Ken Hom. Now, Ken would probably encourage you to chop your audit down to size. He would say, don't let audit bamboozle you. And for us, we need to remember that clinical audit is very much a snapshot of current care. So we would suggest that if Ken Hom was giving you a tip in relation to audit, he'd encourage you to do a quick stir-fry audit, not an adventurous five-course banquet. So... Ken would probably encourage you to do an audit that looks at maybe 10 standards or criteria in the first instance. And uh, he'd be very much about keeping your audit um, to size. Here are the hairy bikers, the cheerful chaps who ride around the country. Um, they're very much about gathering ideas from other people and sharing them out. So from our perspective... We think to make sure that clinical audit is effective, it is about gathering those useful ideas up. Don't work in isolation. Try to make sure that your clinical audit is a team-based approach and look at resources both within the UK and maybe just that bit further afield. 
Next up, we have a baking legend and uh, a bread-making expert from British Bake Off. Uh, he's known as the Silver-Haired Fox, and I'm, I'm not too sure whether we're actually allowed to put this slide up because some people might find it vaguely pornographic. But this is obviously Paul Hollywood, and I'm sure if Paul Hollywood was going to give us some tips, you'll know that on the show he's always talking about avoiding a soggy bottom, on a, particularly on pies. And this occurs when people rush their cookery. And this can happen often in clinical audit projects where people rush through the process and try to get to the end. A good clinical audit will take time and you've got to input time and efforts to complete the process. So Paul would encourage you to make sure your audits are not half-baked. Over to Tracy. Who's next, Tracy? It is the other queen of British baking, and that is Mary Berry, the other half of the Bake Off judging panel. Mary loves a showstopper, a glamorous creation that makes an impact. And for us, it is about making your clinical audit a showstopper. We don't want clinical audits that are mediocre and that are just a box ticking exercise. We'd suggest that you aim for a high class, high quality clinical audit that improves patient care and something that you can share learning and get published. Okay, back to me. Next up we have Heston Blumenthal who's incredibly well known for his eccentric innovations. And when I started working in clinical audit in 1995 we were doing most things by hand but things have moved on since then and we'd encourage you and I'm sure Heston would, he'd encourage you to look at what innovations are available to help you with your clinical audit project. So uh, the team at NICE have identified a best practice for you now through their guideline documents and they've got an array of excellent Excel tools. HGRIP have provided lots of resources so if you go to their website you can see what can help you there. There's all sorts of scanning software that's available from a variety of companies. We often use SurveyMonkey which is very inexpensive and accessible to all. There's lots of other online resources, so Clinical Audit Support Centre have created our Clinical Audit Tools website. And there's also lots of forums that you can go on to share your ideas and find out what other people are doing. So we'd really encourage you, as I'm sure Heston would, to embrace innovations and new technologies to help you with your clinical audits. And our next celebrity chef is Nigella Lawson. Maybe a little bit of eye candy for some of you. Nigella here with, pictured with her buns. And really the message here is that we would suggest you share your audit outputs. It's not about hiding that clinical audit project away in a drawer. We need to make sure that people get feedback, particularly if they've been involved in the project. So get your stakeholders involved. You may be able to use that audit for quality accounts, maybe your CQC evidence. And please think about entering competitions, both HQIP and CASC would be really keen to see the audits that you've undertaken and the successes that you've had. So again, we can share with other people. Following on from Nigella, we have the rather imposing figure of Gordon Ramsay, who's well known for his verbal outbursts, I think it's fair to say. And those of us that have worked in clinical audit... Um, over a period of time, know that occasionally clinical audit can lead you to your own verbal outburst and a little bit of swearing. And that's because clinical audit isn't always easy. We appreciate that there are hurdles and barriers that crop up. I remember working with a practice nurse on an audit and she had incredible difficulties when the other practice nurse went off sick and all the work fell on her shoulder. So sometimes fate will just deal you a bad hand. What you need to do though if you're going to complete your project and get useful results is to be a little bit resilient. You've got to have a, a mentality where you know if those failures occur or those problems crop up that you feel that you can overcome them. So if a clinical audit does deal you a little bit of a bad hand, keep going is the message from Gordon. Levi Roots and his reggae reggae sauce were unknown a few years ago until Levi appeared on that other famous programme, Dragon's Den. But we would suggest that audit can help you really feel like you're a zero to a hero. It can enable you to gain a lot of skills and expertise that won't just help you in terms of your clinical audit work, but maybe also 
your the rest of your professional development and on the screen there's a list of our suggestions as to how it can help you so literature searching skills maybe brushing up your excel or your powerpoint skills it gives you an opportunity if you want to to present your work maybe publish in an academic journal gain a qualification and ultimately enhance your project management skills so i think that's right clinical audit can really help you move forward and believe it or not, we're now at the 10th chef. So we've been through the first nine and we're left with, as you can see, Jamie Oliver, who's well known for getting involved in various different activities and initiatives. And I think if Jamie were to give you a little bit of his own sort of views on clinical audit and, and how you can help, he would say, get involved. Clinical audit isn't going to go away. We know that the Department of Health are fully behind clinical audit and are championing national audits and various audit projects. So it's not going to go away. If you're not sure, at least have a go. Get involved, find out your local audit team and get them to help you with a clinical audit project. Remember, audit will show one of two outcomes. An audit will show that care is up to standard and that's a time to celebrate or your audit will show you that care isn't up to standard, so it's substandard care, in which case we need to act to improve the lot of patients within your organisation. So we've gone through 10 top chefs and bakers and their tips potentially for helping you with your clinical audit. So really, that's the end of our recipe in terms of this film. Um, we'd just like to say, it's over to you now. If you want to get involved, we've created a very short discussion board on the Clinical Audit Tools website. So if you can think of any other chefs that we've not mentioned or bakers or cooking legends who you might want to go onto the discussion board and mention what their top tips might be for Clinical Audit, then as I say, if you go to www.clinicalaudittools.com, you'll be able to link into that. We hope you found this a bit of fun. Cask, try and um, teach Clinical Audit and get people to want to engage in different ways. And Tracy and I have just put this together as, um, as a little bit of a different approach that sort of, as we've said, links into the HQIP tea breaks that will be part of the Clinical Audit Awareness Week. And finally, really the cherry on top of the icing on the cake. We really want you to rise to the occasion and get involved with the HQIP Clinical Audit Awareness Week. Enjoy your own clinical audit tea break. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thank you.